FrugalSim videos are powered by Jetline Systems. Hello YouTube, this is Frugal, and here we are with one week to go before the launch of MSFS, and I'm back in the sim, showing you more of the features. There's a lot of other people doing flying out there. Don't worry, I am going to go flying as well. Not today, though. Today, we're going to look at flight planning. Now, this kind of borrows some features and nuances I get from FSX, from Prepared, but also from Dovetail's Flight Sim World. It, you'll notice, those of you who had Flight Sim World, it already looks a little bit familiar in that respect. What we can do, though, let's imagine that we're going to be flying. I'm going to show the aircraft another point, but let's imagine we're flying a jet. So the simplest way to do a flight plan in this, and especially you new guys who've, who've never done simulation before, you can, of course, just jump in an aircraft, take off, fly around, crash, you know, go sight see, whatever you want to do. But the real fun of this thing comes from once you get into flight planning. In fact, not the flight planning you're seeing here. The real fun comes from doing flight planning like the pros do in the real aircraft. But anyway, what we can do is we can set up here at the departure airport. So you can type in, if you know the code of the airport, like Gatwick is EGKK, you can type that in. You can also type in just Gatwick and it will find that as well. So let's select Gatwick here. Okay, so that is the departure. And let's say we're going to go out to Innsbruck. And again, if I didn't know that Innsbruck is Lima Oscar Whiskey India, I could just type in Innsbruck and find it that way. But let's do that. There we go. Now, this is how most beginners would normally plan a flight. You'll go direct. Okay, so you're taking off here and flying direct over there. That is terribly, terribly, terribly dull, especially once you get involved in the lower level flights. Typically what a jet will do, like an Airbus or a 737 or a 747, is they'll use something called high altitude airways. Now these are also known as air corridors. There's a very famous after dinner speech called What Goes Up Might Come Down, where the, the speaker who is an air traffic controller says the chances of two aircraft being anywhere in the world at the same height on the same position at the same time is so infinitesimally small as to be non-existent. So air traffic control came up with this concept of air corridors, whereby all traffic is forced into a very narrow, very small corridor. Uh, I forget how many miles wide and high it is, but that by forcing them into this corridor, you thereby massively increase the chance of a smash and justify the job of air traffic control. So if you're flying a jet from Gatwick to Innsbruck, you'll typically choose high altitude airways. We had this in the old Sims as well. Now, what it's giving you here are, these are waypoints. So we're taking off from EGKK, Gatwick, we're flying out to Det, then Dover, Xcos, Sosad, Pabla, Utaba, and then Lowy. And that's what the route looks like. And you would typically program that into your aircraft to go fly. I wouldn't advise for the newcomers that you use, uh, you jump in here and do a flight with an Airbus like this, honestly, get, uh, cut your teeth on the GA aircraft like this Cessna up here. So let's go and look at something a little bit more reasonable. Obviously, it's very dark here. By the way, the world as you see it here reflects the current time of day. So it is very dark because it's the current time of day. And you can see that down here. If I change that, it's actually not going to let me change it because I'm set to live in my options. But if I turn live in my options off, then you can set the time of day. What we are going to do, though, let's go ahead and plan a more realistic flight. So my local international airport is Sanford or KSFB. Okay. There. And let's say I want to fly down to Fort Myers, which is down here. Now, this is the reason I'm doing this is it shows you a little bit more of what the built-in flight planner can do and the options available to you. So that would be KFMI, I think it is. Yeah, page filled, Fort Myers. There we go. It's done high altitude airways, which is not what we want to do in a Cessna. We can go direct GPS once again. We can go VOR to VOR. That's more useful. VORs are very high frequency omnidirectional radios. They basically send out a signal on each degree from zero, one, two, three, four, five degrees, all the way around to zero again. So aircraft can figure out roughly where they are by looking at the needle that they're on. But if I zoom in here, now things get interesting. So here's my route, okay? If I click on any part of the route here, it will jump to that part of the route and I can remove stuff as well. And there's a reason I'm removing this stuff, which is all these boxes you see here. Before we talk about all these boxes and lines, let me show you filters. So you can open filters and you can do all sorts of stuff here. You can turn the background map to a satellite view, IFR view, a blended view, which is what is the default. You can turn on and off clouds, precipitation, rain, and so on and so on. The wind effect. If you have friends online, it will show you on this map where they're currently flying, which is beyond awesome. We can show on here as well icons for airports, hard surface runways, grass runways, water runways, snowy runways, dirt runways, and so on and so on. Let's turn all these things off. 
There we go. Now, I think there's some bugs currently. This is still preview. The bugs, I hope, will be fixed by the time of release. But you'll see here it's still showing me certain things. What are these things it was showing me? Well, it's actually showing me key points of interest. So you can see here, for example, Universal Studios. And you can see here Walt Disney World. And again, newcomers, going to be very tempting to take off from somewhere like here and fly and go look at Disney World. If you want to be realistic and get a bit of a challenge out of this, though, don't do it. Let me turn some of this stuff off. There we go. Now it's all gone away. And I'll show you for why in a moment. We can turn airspaces on, we can turn nav aids on, these white dots, and we can turn fix and our nav position reporting off or on. Let's talk about how we would actually plan this flight from Orlando down to Fort Myers. Now, look at these lines. These lines depict controlled airspace. And it's actually a lot more complex than you are going to see in the flight planner here. So I recommend you check out something in your browser, which I just happen to have loaded right now, called, not that, called Sky Vector. This is skyvector.com. Now, when you first load Sky Vector and you give it, see, I've already typed in KSFB Go, and it will center the map on Sanford right there. This blue area, by the way, is a weather warning because we have pretty nasty weather in Florida quite a lot. Um, ignore that. But when you key in an airport here, the map will center on it, and you will see, look, if I zoom in now, it's very, very hard, and I still to this day get get um, have a hard time reading these maps. But look, if you see here, see the shape, a line, going for a kind of a curve down here and then back up here. If we pop back to the sim, there's that same shape. Aha! So that shape in the sky vector corresponds to, in this case, what's called Orlando Class B or Bravo airspace. Now, Orlando Class B or any Class B is the airspace around a major airport. And it is typically very restricted as what you can do. So we're actually taking off from Sanford within Orlando's Class B airspace. So there's Orlando International. We're taking off here, which means there are restrictions on what we can do. Well, what are those restrictions? The restrictions are actually here. See these numbers? I would need to talk to air traffic control if I intend to fly between 3,000 and 10,000 feet. Okay, here between 4,000 and 10,000 feet. And on this one, I can't even say that, between 6,000 and 10,000 feet. Notice it steps down. So the, the ceiling on all of these is 10,000 feet. So 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. But the numbers are going down. So 6,000, 4,000, 30,000. Sorry, 3,000. Okay, it's stepping down because aircraft are descending to land. You notice this one here says SFC to 10,000, which means sea level up to 10,000. So anything from the ground up to 10,000 feet cannot enter this circle without permission from air traffic control. So if we're going to plan a flight here and we're going to be realistic and fly a little VFR, a little GA aircraft like a Cessna, we really want to pay attention to these restrictions and do things properly. There's another chart you should look at. When you load this up, it by default shows you world VFR. On the right-hand side, we have, in this case, because of the area I'm looking at, Orlando TAC, which is the terminal area chart, I think it is. If we click on TAC, yeah, terminal area chart, now we actually get a much clearer view of that airspace. And you're going to see something up here. I'm just going to scroll up here and show you. These are extremely standard symbols, which you're going to see in Microsoft Flight Simulator's Flight Planner. I'll show you them in a minute. Now, what we're going to do then is typically we would want to steer well clear of this airspace or abide by the rules. So we're going to take off from Sanford. We're going southwest. So what we'll do first is go west under 3,000 feet, under 4,000 feet, under 6,000 feet. And let's go on out to here which is Leesburg. Leesburg is another airport, but you notice it doesn't have all that nasty controlled airspace around it. So let's head on out to there. Back over to the sim we go. If I drill down by rolling the mouse wheel in now, you're starting to see live traffic and you're starting to see these symbols. See that symbol? They're not going to get bigger if I zoom in, unfortunately. Those symbols correspond to the symbols I showed you up uh, here. So VOR DME, for example. Uh, VOR DME. Okay. A VOR DME is a very high frequency omnidirectional radio and dis with distance measuring equipment. So this is a state of the art thing that not only emits a different signal on each particular heading, it will also emit enough information for your aircraft to figure out how far away from it you are. That's kind of cool. Anyway, we are looking for Leesburg. Where is Leesburg? Well, having a hard time finding anything, aren't I? The reason I'm having a hard time finding anything are the filters. So if we go and open the filters again, let's turn the airports back on. 
Let's turn hard surface runways back on. Hello. You just notice more stuff popping in now, right? Most Air Force also have a VOR, which is how you would typically navigate in the air aircraft. Don't worry, new guys. I'm going to show you what that exactly means uh, probably next week now on the first proper full flight where we have navigation, which should actually be this flight. But what we can do now is we can say, okay, so we're going to take off from here and we're going to fly out to Leesburg. I can right, sorry, I can left click on that, left click, and I can add. Hello. Now we're getting a bit of a plan in here. And you see we're getting out of this airspace and then we're avoiding all that nonsense pretty much all the way down here. Now, VORs have a limited range. I forget what it is, but it also depends on the altitude you are. The lower you are, the less range you have before you can pick the damn thing up. So we want to be aware of that. We want to keep planning our route, taking into effect, into account, that we're going to lose track of some of these beacons as we start to fly. So... Let's go down to where Sun and Fun is. Very famous fly-in here in Florida. And we will pick up uh, that one, LAL, which is Lakeland, Lakeland Linda Regional Airport. So we will click on this and we will say add. Now we have something that we can use to navigate. So we're going to take off, fly to the west out to Leesburg, then go down to Lakeland. Look at the distance here. We're actually looking pretty good, I think. Don't really need to add in many more waypoints because we could just tune into page field at this point and go direct to there. But look at that symbol. See that symbol? Just a little hexagon or whatever it is. If we go back over to our TAC view and we'll zoom in here, a hexagon on his own. Okay, that's a VHF, omnidirectional range. Sorry, VOR. What am I talking about? Very high frequency on VHF, omnidirectional range. Um, VOR. So we can use that to navigate as well. It's just not as good. It doesn't have the distance finding equipment. I've already got like 50,000 comments telling me I got VOR wrong. I know. I just corrected it. Let's add that there. Now, having done all of that, we actually have a flight plan, which is semi-realistic. We're avoiding most of the major airspaces. Of course, Florida's very busy. You are going to be flying through some controlled airspace. And in the real world, you'll need to talk to the controllers periodically. And that's where that chart comes in. You start looking to see who do I need to contact. You can see the frequencies here. CDC Orlando Approach, 120.15. Uh, down here, CDC Orlando Approach on 119.4, and so on and so on. If we head on down towards Lakeland, not even sure we're going to get down to Lakeland here. Well, there's Lake Wales, so maybe Haines City, Lakeland should be around here somewhere. Very hard to see. Actually, no, I think it's slightly off to the left of the map. But if we go over to the Orlando, sorry, World VFR, you'll see it here. There's Lakeland right down there. And you can see... Oh, uh, Lakeland, Linda, ATIS, so the weather, 118.025, and control, 124.5. So there's the frequencies that we're getting that we need. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So you can pick up all the frequencies that you need as you go further down. By the way, notice here, VOR TAC, 116 is the frequency for that VOR that we keyed in, LAL. Remember, if we head back over here, we have a waypoint, LAL. That would be that, right there. You can see the dotted line following it all the way down. I know these charts are incredibly hard to read, but you get the point. Anyway, so you, the point is, if you're doing all this low-level flying stuff, you can plan a semi-accurate semi route using the built-in flight planner in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I would just highly advise that you pay attention to that, something like Sky Vector, to see exactly where it should go. Having set your flight plan in here, look, we can click on Navlog. Ha-ha, now we're seeing some interesting things. So we're going to see here, Leesburg International, 6,000 feet. Well, actually, no, we didn't really want that, did we? Let's set our cruising altitude because we don't want to violate airspaces at 4,500 feet. There. So now, well, it didn't update, did it? I don't know why. Again, maybe a bug. Oh, no, it updated here, but it just didn't. Oh, there we go. What am I saying? While I'm not looking, it's updated. But what you're seeing here, by the way, there's LAL. 116.00. You'll notice that our Leesburg International Waypoint we actually don't have a radio frequency for it. So we might want to change that waypoint so that we have a radio frequency that we can follow. IFMY, we have a radio frequency. And then obviously at IFMY, we're actually over um, Pagefield, uh, Fort Myers, Florida, and we can go ahead and land. But there we are, pretty cool. And you can see here as well from the flight plan, if we are cruising based on this aircraft at 195 knots-ish, we are going to take this amount of time between each waypoint. Unfortunately, there's not a total don't know why, uh, but you can add all this up and you can see how long your flight's going to take. It's about an hour. Just, you yeah, know, roughly an hour. Yeah. So that is the flight plan feature 
in Microsoft Flight Simulator. As I said, you can go up here and make the sim do it all for you. Where's the fun in that? If you figure out how to use VORs and things like that, which I'll show you next week. Yes, I know I got the definition of VOR wrong at the, at the beginning of this video. I get that. Thanks for the comments. If you figure out how to use VORs, and I'll show you in a video next week, then it's actually a lot more fun to plan your own route because you can also start planning to take in various sites. Like this is, this red area here, by the way, normally means heavy restrictions. Well, the restrictions there are, that is actually the Space Coast. So that's where the uh, SpaceX rockets take off. If you're as old as I am, you'll remember that's where the Space Shuttle took off. If you're older than I am, that's where Apollo took off. Um, so at certain points of the year, the airspace here is incredibly restricted because of things either going up or things coming back down. And again, you can refer to the maps for this. If we go Orlando TAC and scroll on over here, there it is. You can see here, Kennedy Space Center, Space operations, active intermittently, you can see here, are 2933, 2934, and 2935. What do those mean? On Sky Vector, they're actually listed up here somewhere. There we go. 2933. 5,000 5, to unlimited. Don't go over that, right? Unlimited. So when a rocket's going up, you cannot fly in that area. Other times, 11,000 to unlimited and so on. So it's putting in airspace restrictions, altitude restrictions. And uh, yeah. It's intermittent. It's not all the time. You're notified by a NOTAM, normally 24 hours in advance, that a rocket's going to take off. You can't fly there. But that's what those red fuzzy hatches mean here. Around here. And again, you can refer to the legend at the top left of the tack, and it will show you there. See these? What the various hatches mean. So spend some time with something like this. Log on to skybeta.com. Spend some time with something like this. Really read all this stuff. I know it can be a little bit dull, but you kind of get into it and understand what's going on. And then it makes flight planning an absolute dream. And so does Microsoft Flight Simulator, thanks to its built-in flight planner. Anyway, hope that was useful. For those of you who've not seen the sim yet, we are one week to go. Not long now. As always, my name is Frugal. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you all very soon.